Hey everyone, we're Lindsay and Chase from We're Out and About. We're traveling nurses and we travel full time in our RV. Most of the time you'll find us traveling around the country, staying at RV resorts, but this summer we found a contract right here in Chase's hometown <laughs> and we are going to be mooch docking at his parents' house. So mooch docking is when you park an RV at your house or a friend's house, family's house, and you use their water and electric. And since we already have water hookups, we are going to work on power hookups because right now we're limited to 15 amps of power, which is just the regular wall outlet. So today, yeah. we want to install a 50 amp RV power hookup. Yeah, so 15 amps isn't really a big deal if you're just there for a weekend or a week, but since we're going to be here for at least three months working, we want to have access to use all of our appliances, like our air conditioner, our refrigerator, I mean everything, our water heater, everything. So we are going to go ahead and install the 15 amps outlet. Yes. So we only have a 30 amp RV, but I know a lot of you might be wondering why are you doing 50 amps, but we are just kind of thinking ahead. So eventually we're going to end up with a 50 amp camper. So instead of hooking up a 30 amp now and then in the future being limited to a 30 amp on a 50 amp RV, it is better for us to just go ahead and do the 50 amp now. Just go big. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just use our little adapter cable to convert down to 30 amps in the meantime with our 30 amp trailer but we'll be all good and ready for a 50 amp trailer in the future. So just to forewarn you, if you are not used to any electrical work or don't feel comfortable doing this, we highly recommend just reaching out to an electrician. That's just the safest way to go about this. You want to make sure it's done right and that you don't get injured. And we're going to go ahead and show you all the supplies and kind of the steps to go through this if you would ever want to install 50 amp um, hookups. Um, for this project, it probably cost us between like $250 and $300. And that's going to vary just based off of the length of the wire you need, the size of the wire, and just prices at the time. So we'll go ahead and kind of show you how to go through this. All right, and hopefully we have a shockingly good time today. <laughs> Without the shock, okay? Okay. Okay. Hopefully we have a good time today. Dad jokes. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Now let's talk about our supplies here. Most of these things are available at your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware. Um, some mom and pop places, or you can also order some of the, these things from the internet, um, like Amazon. I got this RV receptacle from Amazon. Um, so we will be doing 50 amp RV hookups today. So I have a 50 amp RV receptacle. I have six gauge three conductor wire, which is appropriate for a 50 amp hookup. And I have a 50 amp breaker right here. It is a square D breaker, which matches my brand of breakers and my panel downstairs. You want to look at your breaker panel and see what brand it is and you want to buy the same breaker to match up to it. Now if you want to do a 30 amp hookup, some things that will change will be your breaker. You'll get a 30 amp breaker. You'll get a smaller gauge wire. Instead of 6 you might get 8 gauge or 10 gauge. And then you will get a 30 amp RV receptacle instead of the 50. Depending on your length of wire, so if you are running like 100 feet of RV wire, you're going to want to go bigger. So our 6 gauge, if we were running this 100 feet or whatnot, we would want to get even bigger, like 4 gauge. Our run is only going about 25 feet, so this 6 gauge will be plenty. Um, an example on the 30 amps, if you were running a long length of wire for your 30 amp, you want to do 8, maybe even 6 gauge to account for voltage drop on that long, long run. These other things here, this is just a connector for the cable to run into our panel, the breaker panel downstairs. Cable clamps to secure the cable to the wood rafters. Over here is everything in regards to outside when we mount the RV receptacle to the wall outside. And then this PVC connectors right here. This is an elbow. The wire is going to come out, run into this elbow. I have a little section of PVC here to run it over. This is a male connector to help protect this cable from getting fraying on the sharp metal here. We'll have to punch that out and insert this male connector. We have PVC glue right here. This is what's going to secure the PVC and help keep things waterproof. And right here is a PVC cutter so we can trim all this PVC down. I have a large drill bit here to create this hole in the side of the house and also a whole bit that way we can create a big enough diameter for the PVC to go into the side of the wood. Um, well, it's just a little bit of extra PVC back here just in case I need a little more for any little sections. 
Last is our digital multimeter. I will use this to check voltage and everything on the hookups before connecting the RV, making sure we're ready to hook up and um, ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is go downstairs and start running our cable. All right, we're here in the basement and our next step is to run cable. But first I wanted to just show you our breaker panel here. We first look at our brand. It's a Square D company, so we needed to get a Square D brand breaker. And then we also wanted to make sure we had slots available for an extra breaker. Luckily we have two slots right here for our 50 amp. A 30 amp will only take up one slot. If you have no available slots, then you're gonna have to look into your options on getting an extra panel. So we will install our Square D breaker 50 amp, and then we will run cable at the bottom up through the ceiling and we will create a hole to the outside to get the cable to our review receptacle. We are now drilling a hole to the outside. We're outside now and I just drilled a pilot hole from the inside out and now I'm going to use a larger wood bit to make a larger hole for the cable and PVC pipe because this is where we're going to be mounting our outlet. All right, we have the wire fed up to the ceiling. For now it's not tidied up or anything. We ran through, and then we have our hole up here that I just drilled. Okay, we have our cable running out our hole. Now we are going to be running it through our PVC and getting it fed through our box here. The next step after that, we'll get things wired up. Before we mount this box, we want to knock this piece out. That way we can feed our wire for However, I want to get rid of this plug. I'm going to remove these screws, remove the plug. That way we don't do any damage to anything behind it. And uh, we've got to get this taken out before we do this. So. Okay. So you can see back here, the ground. So I have it mounted. for a moment. All right, now we are ready to knock that piece out. Okay, we have our hole out. Now we are going to insert this male adapter PVC and the nut on the inside. This helps keep our cable from getting frayed from all the metal, sharp metal that we had to cut out. So now we will put this nut in here and tighten it down. Okay, we're gonna get this box mounted before we do with this wiring. What I wanna do now is start to uh, pull back this rubber cover and separate the cables. That way they'll be easier to feed through to the receptacle. Okay, so we finally got wired up. Um, took a little finagling, but Chase stripped it as you can see, and then we just fed each wire individually through our 90 degree angle, through the offset and through the adapter into the receptacle box. So we have our four wires there and we're getting ready to attach them here to our outlet. So as you can see, we have four little spots and then on the back, we have the green, which is our ground. It's already wired and it comes like that. So we will attach our ground up here. For us, our ground is this bare metal copper. It is not insulated, so it will go there. Our red and black are our hot wires, and those will both attach to these two sides. It doesn't matter which one, red or black can go on either side. And then the bottom is our neutral, which is our white. So um, on the back, it even helps you too. It shows you the green and white on our specific one. 
but we're getting ready to attach them. We'll wire them up through here. First, we'll have to strip the ends of these, feed them through and lock them down, tighten them down. And then we will put this on, kind of backing in, and then we have to head back inside and go to the main breaker box. And that's where we'll do our final wiring. Then we'll run some tests and hopefully we'll be good to go. Have all of our wires stripped and ready. We already have mounted our first ground back there. So now our next step is going to be to get our outlet. We have to mount the green ground back by the other copper one. And then these three white, red, and black all around here. And we'll close it up and carry on inside. We were able to get it all hooked up. It's all tucked back behind the outlet. We just like got this cap on. So now we get to head inside and finish up. All right, next up is to remove the panel door so we can get to the back of it. Okay, we have our cable ran down here and we have found an entrance inside the breaker panel. We went on through, we stripped back our black wire. We have our two hotlines here that are stripped, ready to be connected to our 50 amp breaker. A neutral and ground here, ready to be connected to our bus bar up top. And we have a spot down here for our 50 amp breaker. We are all wired up, breaker set. Now it is time to go check our voltages outside. All right, we're all wired up. So now it's time to go check our voltage with the multimeter. <laughs> Here we go, we're gonna check out our voltages and make sure our ground is good to go. Check everything before we plug our RV in. So let's go ahead and check our ground first. Which we're gonna hook into the top and bottom, ground and neutral. And we have zero volts, so we have a good ground. So let's go ahead and check our right hotline. We should get 120. So we're getting 123 volts. Let's go ahead and check our left hotline. 123 Yay. volts, great. Now let's go ahead and check both of them. We should get around 240. So we got 246.7. Go ahead and check this neutral here. Okay. Great, all right. Everything looks awesome. Now, we have a power watchdog here by Hughes Autoformers. We really, really like this surge protector. It hooks up to Bluetooth. Um, it actually will detect faults in the plug and such and protect our RV from anything that's wrong. Since it's a 30 amp plug, we have a 50 amp adapter here. So essentially it's only gonna give us power from one of these hotlines. So since we have a 30 amp RV, we can't use both hotlines. So this will downgrade the 50 amp power to our 30 amp power. And then this dog, dog's face glows white when he's happy. So he will. He looks happy. Yeah, I think he's good to he go. He is not giving us a red angry dog face. Yeah, so since that's he's, a good sign. since he's Bluetooth, I am going to check out and make sure we have our power. All right, it is saying line one, 122 volts. We're using 4.1 amps right now. Everything looks great, awesome. I think next up, we're gonna just seal around this PVC. That way it's all weather tight. Okay, now we're just sealing everything up so it's waterproof. So right there where the PVC enters the house, we're sealing that. Now we seal all around the receptacle box. And then you can see we already sealed over here, right where that goes into the box. Just some final touches here. Well, we are all finished. And now we have our full 30 amps of power for our travel trailer. And we're set up for a 50 amp trailer in the future. So win-win. So overall, it went really well. Um, we do have a couple takeaways that we wanted to share with you just in case you decide that you want to take on this project. First off, definitely get more wire yeah. than you think you need. And just we, imagine if you didn't have enough wire, you'd have to restart everything. That would so. be a disaster. Yeah, yeah, basically starting from scratch and all that wire is wasted. 
Um, what else? Oh, another the thing. Elbow. Six gauge wire is so thick and hard to work with. I kind of regret doing that immediate 90 degree turn as soon as we came out of that hole. So there is like flex pipe and everything, different ways you can actually run your cable. I kind of regret doing that 90 degree. It was actually really difficult to get that vent and into the box, which leads me to the box. The box was kind of, our receptacle box was a little small and it was really, oh <laughs> really kind of hard to get your hands in there. The um, uh, ground wire in the back was really short, so they didn't, yeah, they give, didn't much... give me much to work with really yeah. there. So we got it done, but yeah. it was, it was tight. So look so. for like a little bit of a larger box that'll give you more room to work. Yeah. What else? That's pretty much about it. I mean, like I said, it went pretty well. It was just a one day project yeah. for about $300 for what we did. and. We're really happy we did this. Now we have no worries of being limited to our 15 amp wall outlet and we should have smooth sailing while we're here on our nursing contract at my parents' house. So leave us questions or any concerns, maybe things we should have done differently in the comment section below and thank you for watching. Hope this helps. <laughs>